Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a parent record in a one-to-many relationship if none exists in your Access database. This is a problem that has come up a lot in the past and people always ask me about it. If you go to the order entry form that we built and the user tries entering a line item, right, order detail item in the sub form before this parent record exists, you get an error message. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get around that with a little bit of code. There's the code right there. I'll explain it in just a minute. Now, this is a developer video, which means there's a little bit of VBA, but don't be scared. I got a video to teach you everything you need to know to get started with VBA. Go watch this first if you've never done any programming. It's literally like you'd see right here. It's four lines of code. It's not hard. And I'll explain what all this means in a minute. Also, if you have not yet watched my invoicing video, go watch this first. This explains how I built the database that we'll be using today. And also go watch my widows and orphans video. I explain this concept in more detail. A widow is basically a parent record without children and an orphan is a child record without a parent. So this video explains all that. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them now and I'll wait for you. Go on, go watch them and, and then come back, come on back. Okay, so here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. And I recently decided to update it a little bit and to change the template. It's evolved a little bit over the years. We're on version 1.9 now. And what I decided to do was I wanted to add some additional orders to the system. Okay, because I don't have a lot of order information in here. So I started going through and I started doing some witty, funny stuff like James Kirk, you know, orders, you know, he ordered a you know, phaser bank, a photon torpedo. It's, it's good to have data in here for, for showing for classes, but I've only for the past couple of years had like two or three orders in here. So I wanted to add a bunch of stuff. So I started going through, I made a couple for James Kirk. I did these, you know, off the top of my head, some stuff for Deanna Troy, I think. What about, oh, no, I think I skipped her. What do we got? Uh, Jean-Luc's got some stuff, all right? Antique book, bottle of wine. I was just going off the top of my head, stuff that I know he likes. And then I said to myself, I started getting burned out by the time I got down to like Cisco and them. And when I finally got down to the Rush guys, right? Neil Peart, Getty Lee and stuff. I decided, you know what? Let me ask ChatGPT to give me some cool stuff. And it came up with some amazing ideas. A Tom Sawyer paint set. You know, the trees bonsai kit. <laughs> what does this say? You know, a gardening kit featuring a miniature bonsai tree, pruning shears and instructions on how to care for your very own forest. <laughs> Inspired by the song of the trees. I'm telling you, ChatGPT really is impressing me more and more each day. So I started going through and doing this stuff. And then I realized that, you know, a lot of people have complained over the years that if you try to do this, if you go to a new record and you try to put something in a detail item, but you forget to put something up top first, I hit the button, look, it says you must enter a value in the order detail T dot order ID field. And that's because if you remember in the widows and orphans video, I showed you that if you make the order ID required in the sub form, then you have to put a record in. Okay. Yeah. You can come up here and type, but as soon as you try to leave that, you get that. Okay. And I'll hit escape a few times and that's in the order detail T. Yeah. Okay. It's open. Right. If you come in here and the order ID, which is what makes the relationship, we set that to required and that will prevent that will prevent um, orphaned records from data entry. You could still get orphaned records from deleting records. And we'll talk about that toward the end of the video. But the point of this video today is this is not a very user friendly error message. Now, yeah, you could use a form level event and intercept the error and tell the user, hey, you got to put a record up top first, blah, 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 blah. But nine times out of 10, you don't want to have to bother to do that. You've already got the customer defaulted because the customer forms open. The order dates defaulted. The description's optional. So why don't we just go ahead and if the user tries adding a record down here, just automatically add that order record up top, right? Why not? And the way that we can do that is by saying down here in the sub form, okay, if you try to add a record here and there is no order ID, cause it's null right now. See the new, that means it's null. If you try to add a record and there is no order ID, just add that parent record, refresh it and let the user continue on without any interruption in work, right? 
So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna use something called the before insert event. Before insert runs before you try inserting a new record into a form. All right, so we're gonna do that in the sub form. So go to design view, go to the forms properties. You gotta click once and that will give you the outline here. That's the sub form object, the control in the parent form. We don't want that. We wanna double click right there and that will open up the forms property sheet for the sub form. Okay, go to events, find before insert, and then dot, 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 click on that builder event. That will open up our good friend, the VBA editor, and we're in the form before insert event for the order detail sub form. Okay, now right in here, we're gonna say, if there is no order ID on the parent form, then add one. So we're gonna say, if is null, now we're gonna use the keyword parent, bang, order ID. Okay, that's saying the parent forms order ID. If that's null, then do some stuff. What's the stuff we're gonna do? Well, we have to add a record. And how do you add a record? You can add a record very simply by just changing any field value up there. I'm gonna do the date. I'm gonna set the parent order date equals today's date, right? I know it already is, but that's a default value, so it doesn't create a record. If you manually set that date value in code, it will create the record. Okay, let's save this and see what we got so far. All right, let's save it, save it, close it, open it. <laughs> All right, now if I go to a blank new record and I come down here and I start typing, all right, look what happened. It, it set the date, but my record's dirty. I don't like that. I don't like having a dirty record up top here. When I move to this one, right, I wanna have that so that this one's saved automatically. All right, so I'm gonna hit escape again a couple times. Escape, 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 escape. Let's go back to our code editor. And all we have to do after we set that date is just refresh that parent record. So parent dot refresh. Okay, what's the difference between that exclamation point and the dot? Well, the exclamation point indicates I want a field on the parent form. The dot is looking for a property or a method. That's called a method, doing something. Refresh, requery, that kind of stuff. I wanna tell that parent form to refresh itself. And that folks is it. That's the extent of the code. That's all you need. All right, save it. Once in a while, give it a debug compile just to make sure there are no errors anywhere in your database. We can close that now. Close it, open it back up. Let's go to a new record. And let's say Neil wants to buy some drumsticks. That's it, see? It automatically added that record and allowed us to enter in that drumsticks record. Now, at this point, it's possible for the user to delete that parent record. Okay, there's nothing preventing that. And unfortunately right now, if you go to the order detail table, come all the way to the bottom, and yeah, if you get some time, look through some of these. I did some fun stuff in here. There's a lot of cool stuff, let's see. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of neat stuff I got off of ChatGPT. All right, and you can see there's drumsticks right there. It still exists. And there's another earlier orphan in here too. So I can delete these manually, but how do you prevent those? How do you prevent those in the future? Well, the way to prevent that, the easiest way, you could do it with code, but the easiest way is to simply set up a global system relationship. Now, I generally tend away from those. As an advanced developer, I prefer the code solution, but it's a lot more difficult. I'll cover that in a future video. I do cover it in my developer classes. But an easy way to prevent that is to go up to Database Tools, go to Relationships. All right, we're going to add tables, bring in the Order Table and the Order Detail Table. And if you want to at this point, go ahead and bring in the Customer Table as well. I'll slide that over here. All right, these are all the system relationships. Now, I don't have any because I usually don't set them up. The reason why is because when you start getting into more advanced databases and you split your database and you got multiple database files, these relationships don't work across different files if you get linked uh, tables in your database. So I, for example, my database, my order table is in its own file because it's huge. The customer table is in a different ACCDB file. So I can't make a relationship between them. So I handle all that with code. But if you got small databases or, or if you've got a a linked backend file and it's just one file, you're fine. You can set relationships up in that. And we can set these relationships up by saying customer ID, click and drag to customer ID. 
All right, here you go. You want to enforce referential integrity. Now, what that does is that says, okay, you can't delete a customer as long as that customer has orders. If you want to learn more about referential integrity, I got a whole separate video on that. Go watch this one. I'll put a link down below in the link section. And there's some other options in here. Cascade updates, you're never going to use it. I don't use it. Cascade update says if you change the primary key, like you change a customer ID, then it'll change it in the, in the child records, which we're never going to do because we always use auto numbers for our primary keys. And so that's not an issue. Cascade delete is dangerous. Be very, very careful with it. That says if I delete a customer, it deletes all of his orders and related records. I almost never use deleted uh, Cascade deletes. It's dangerous. Stay away from it. Very few exceptions. Usually like temporary data is okay to, to do a Cascade delete. Like I have a, uh, my email seminar, I build an email server where you can, you know, send your email batches out and, you know, customer will have an email and it might have some related categories in a separate table. So if the emails are deleted when they're sent, because it's only temporary data, then it deletes those category records. And I do have cascade deletes on there, but that's not really important data that I want to care about saving. All right, so we're going to create that relationship. Okay, now it says the database could not lock customer T because it's already in use. That could happen if the customer T is open. So let's save this. It'll just save the layouts there. If you see that, that means, yep, see these tables are open. You got to close them. Close everything down. All right, you shouldn't have any tables or forms open when you try to do this. All right, and that's good that that came up. All right, so try this. Customer to customer. Enforce referential integrity. Create. There we go. See the little one to many? You'll also start seeing this in your queries now because now your queries... The queries generally just guess if it sees the same field name and the right data types, but now it knows that this field is that field. And we'll do the same thing from order to order here. Enforce referential integrity. This, I mean, this is one where you could do cascade deletes if you, if you really wanted to, because if you do delete the order, then the line items on that order are meaningless anyways. So yeah, I guess, okay, sure, fine. Create, there you go. Of course, you shouldn't delete orders in the first place. Even if they're just samples, I recommend just make a field in that order table that says this isn't a valid order, it's a quotation, or it's just a sample, or whatever. All right, don't delete it. Leave it in there. What's, what's the harm? I mean, unless you got, you know, unless you're processing hundreds of thousands of orders a month, it's not going to be an issue. All right, but anyways, save that, control S, close it. Now we've got some global relationships in our database. All right, so if I go to a customer, if I try to go to an order, if I add an order here, let's say new, you know, uh, telescope. Okay, got a brand new order with the telescope. If I try to delete that order now, it should have also deleted the telescope. Let's see, order detail. And there's no telescope on the end. Okay, like I said, that, that is dangerous though, so be careful with that. I'm going to, I think I'm gonna go in here and for the, for the purposes of, whoop, I just hit compact and repair. All right, come on back. There we go. <laughs> Do that every now and then too. I got a whole separate video on that as well. I'll put a link down below. But I think for the purposes of this database, I am going to set it so that this relationship, double click here to edit the relationship, by the way, I'm going to turn off cascade deletes. The reason why also is because if the user does something like that, all right, let's say you go in here and you add another record. All right, another telescope. Okay. If you delete the parent record, it, it kind of makes it too easy to accidentally delete a record. At least now it says the record cannot be deleted or changed because the order detail T includes related records. So the user has to know now, all right, I've got to delete these subform records here, the, the children records, before I can delete the parent order record. It's just another step to you know be careful that you don't break stuff. I've got another video where I talk about preventing deletions. You know, you pop up multiple, are you sures? You know, require a manager password. You don't want your average user to be able to delete an order just easily, right? They can go back and really mess with your accounting. If you want to learn more about this parent-child record stuff, my Access Expert Level 2 class, I cover a lot more, including table normalization, global relationships, referential integrity, cascade updates and deletes. It's an hour and a half class. I cover lots and lots of additional information that I don't always include here in these fast tips and tech help videos. So I'll put a link to this class down below as well. Check it out. And remember, if you become a member, gold members get a free 
expert class. You got to finish the beginner classes first. Silver members get a free beginner class once each month. Gold members get a free expert class. So you finish the beginner series, you get expert one, expert two, expert three. You can keep going on. Uh, platinum members can go up through the developer series. So memberships include more than just my extended cut videos. They also include my free courses too. But there you go, folks. There is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.